and get in my own parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> thing doesn't work. Thank you. That's the next project. Right here. That might be the biggest one. <laughs> All right, fire away, gang. Yeah, we're working through a new deal right now. In fact, the uh, first time we even talked about a deal was about an hour and five minutes ago with uh, Charlie's representative, who, by the way, is a terrific, terrific man who I've known since my days at Colorado State. He was one of our biggest boosters. He was a Colorado State alum, and if you all remember, Urban was a was a wide receiver coach for us at Colorado State, and that's where Hiram, his name is Hiram DeFreeze, he lives out in Seattle. And he's kind of taken Charlie and Urban and some of Urban's uh, coaching tree under his wing, and he does it for free and just gives them good advice and just a terrific guy to deal with. Tom, were you ever nervous throughout Charlie's process there that, that you might lose him? Was I nervous? Yeah. You nuts. <laughs> <laughs> of course I was nervous. <laughs> of course I was. You you said for the last couple of weeks you said he has to want to be here. When did you when did you come to the realization that he wants to be here? Well, I talked to him last night. What did he say? What kind of were his words? Well, you know, a lot of that will stay between us, but it was very it was emotional. And uh, he's a, he's a man of integrity, high integrity, and uh, he and that all shown through Charlie, his actions. Charlie talked a lot about the contract, not this contract, but the contract you gave him last year, as they showed your relationship and support. What, what did that mean for the, this process? You know, how it's probably a better question for him. I did it because I thought he was invaluable. Uh, you know, you all know me well enough now that it's, uh, I've been here 15 years, and fit is a very important thing to me. It's very, very important to me, and, and Charlie fits. He fits. And what he does on the football field is terrific. It's grandiose, and it's wonderful. But what I really take notice of is what he does off the football field. And you look at these, these wonderful kids that we have in this program. Not going to wood. You don't, you don't read a lot about them for the wrong reasons. They're going to class. He does a remarkable job. He doesn't do it because he's the head football coach and you're supposed to go to class. He does it because he believes in it. He wants them all to walk out of here with an education because he believes in it. He truly wants to be a father figure, and he is. Uh, he's, he's the Pied Piper of this football program. And as I think I mentioned this morning to Drew, is I think it was very evident up at Rutgers. Probably more, I saw that more than anything I've ever seen before is, because Teddy should have never played in that football game. And I don't think the coaches wanted to play Teddy because they knew they didn't want to jeopardize anything about him. But Teddy, I think, did it. Number one, he did it for the university, but number one, he did it for Charlie. He wanted to do it for Charlie, and that, that was an incredible performance. Um, the fact that he, he turned down an SEC program without even, before he even signed a new deal, just to kind of a gentleman's agreement, what does that say for the Louisville program and what uh, the future that you guys have? Well, Chip, I think what it does say is we're committed, but I think we've always been committed. I've been committed since the day I walked here. I mean. It's, I think everybody always looks at us as a long shot, and I don't think we're. I don't, we're not an underdog. You know, I, I truly believe. And you all know I'm probably biased, and, but I truly believe now, as of 7:40 last Wednesday morning, when John Swafford called, it's a top 10 job in the country. And somebody debate that with me, please, because I, I will debate that till I drop dead. I think it's a top 10 job in the country in football. And as we move on to the ACC and all the things that they provide for us, uh, we're very fortunate and blessed to be there. But I think, you know, I, I think you'll see a lot of people say no. How much do you think last week factored into the decision for Charlie? So and that, excuse me, being what? That go, go in? Yeah. Oh, I'm certain it did. I'm certain it did. And it, and it had to. It had to. How important was he being your football coach and getting the football program in the position it is to getting in the ACC, you think? Oh, I think it's important. I think all your programs need to be excelling. There's no question. I, we've always strived for excellence. Though. We always have in every sport. I think the ACC really caught wind of that. You know, we, we don't want to be just a one-sport school. We want to be good in all 23, and I think more than anything, that caught the ACC's eye. You said that you would pay him whatever you had to to keep him. Are, are you going to have to make him the highest paid coach in college football? What do you, no, where where no, are we looking no, at? No, we one? never even talked about a number through this whole thing. None, I know people don't believe me, but it's true. We never even talked about a number. Just said, trust me. Yeah, I'm going to take care of him. And I promise his daughters will go to have lunch money tomorrow. It'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be good. But he deserves it. He deserves it. And I don't look at this as just paying a coaching salary. I look at this as an investment in our program. And he's he's somebody that he's going to get his market value. And he's, he's at a very high level. And you know, I'm going to pay him that. You so, said a top ten job. Will he be a top ten paid coach? I would imagine. Yeah, I would imagine. I hope so.
Um, your athletic budgets are around $80 million, and so when football is only like 25, 27% of that in terms of revenue, is there a lot of room in terms of growth for you revenue wise? Is that oh, there'll be room for growth. There's, but we don't know that yet because we're just going to jump into the unknown, just like hey, it's easy to project and look at things, but you don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. Uh, you know, I try, I try to be very uh, conservative when it comes to budgeting. I want to make sure that we always have a protection clause in there built in for ourselves. And uh, I think, you know, Charlie, we're going to take good care of him. And I'm going to, more importantly, uh, as was the most important thing to him, in total Charlie style, is don't worry about me, Tom. Worry about my system. And that's that's why I love the guy. Tom, does the hope that this is not going to be an every year process with him? Well, Tom, I've always said it very clearly. You want people wanting your coaches. I've been on the other one, they don't want your coaches. So, they, you know, if you give me a choice, I'm going to want, want, want my coaches. He's done a great job, and we had to go to a BCS Bowl, and then and, and they won him a lot. And so if, I, if that's what we have to do every year, we're going to do it. But I think we we will f fight everybody tooth and nail to keep it. What does today say about the future of this program, this decision from Charlie to stay? What does it say about the future? Well, I think, for number one, it says he loves it here. I think, number two, it says his family loves it here. And I think he knows that he is a great fit here. You know, to, I don't want to make it much bigger than really, what it really is. This is a decision that he made for him and his family, and that's why I really applaud him. You know, I've never hesitated whether Charlie was going to be here or somebody else. We're going, we're going to be a big time football program. We strive for that. We're going to be until the day I die, and and we're going to get better every single year. You know, maybe not on the maybe not on the wins and loss sheet, but we're going to get better every because that's that's what I give every waking moment to. You you would have gone out. Say he made another decision, gone out and hired somebody, and said that very thing you just said. But having a coach stay and having him not go to the Southeastern Conference and stay, what kind of step does that make for the program? Well, I think it's bigger probably to some other people than it really is to me. Um, I've never, I, I have unbelievable respect for the Southeastern Conference, but they're humans just like we are. You know, they're they're not going to be pouring any more money into their programs than I'm pouring into this one. I mean. I look at the schools that we're going to be competing with in the ACC, and I look at the upper echelon of the of the SEC. You know, they're they're very comparable, they're very strong. And I just want to, you know, I, I just want everybody to know that I'm not I'm not ready to say we're a second place program. I'm not ready to say we're second tier. I think we're first tier, and I will and I I truly will debate anybody on this as being a top ten job in the country. You mentioned a phrase this morning on radio that I find interesting: the word "all in." What, can you explain what that is and what you mean by that? It just came out of my <laughs> I did go time when we were at a, in a golf tournament out in Shelbyville about 10 years ago. And I should have patented it because everybody's using that now. We, we did that at a, a pre-golf tournament party there, the Michael Wong tournament. Should have patented that one, so maybe all in will be the new one. But uh, I, it, we're all in, and it's, it, it's not so much a cliche. It's just it's something that everybody's bought into this program. Our fan base, our community, our media. Our student athletes, Charlie, I mean, he proved it. And I, you know, I'm a huge person when it comes to let's walk the walk. Everybody can talk the game. We've seen it. There's people who talk this game all over the country, how great they are. But we walk it. I'm not saying we're great. We, we strive to get better, but we walk it. And I think Charlie walked it this morning. Tom, Charlie earlier today mentioned the contract extension that you gave him last year. Can you go through the thought process from your side as to he's 2 and 4 and 9 and 10 overall? But you were, you know, going through and deciding about a contract extension at that time for you. What was it like? You know, when I went after Charlie, he was the only candidate. He was it, and I knew exactly what I wanted, and I know why I wanted him, and I and I, I wanted to give him the opportunity. And you know, he, it's well documented. I did my homework. You know, I talked to all the people. Everybody said I just raved about him with flying colors. But the one thing I asked him at that kitchen table with him and Vicky was. I want you to focus in on building a program. Don't worry about the team right now. Focus in on building the program because I'm in this for the long haul, and uh, and he did. And so, what kind of an AD would I have been to turn my back on a guy because he's two and four? You know, we were we were limping along. The year before, he was he did a miraculous job just to get us to a bowl game. So we're ahead of schedule then. Last year, we're two and four. So, you know, it's it's pretty easy to sit back and criticize. The the I think the key thing that for me to do was to get behind him. And show them my support, and they, and they did a great job with it. And he's never taken that for granted. And uh, you know, it was a small thing, but maybe it was monumental to him. And I, if it was, and I'm I'm all for it. But he deserved it. He deserved it. And I really believe me. I was looking five years down the road when I did that deal. 
What Tom, kind of impact do you think his, uh, his, his comments from the other day will have on the fans? That you probably ought to answer that more than anybody because you're one of the big fans. Well, so you answer it, and uh, no I'm all, I'm all, I'm all, you know. I Charlie's going to tell you what, what it's on his mind. He's going to tell you what's on his mind. He's not going to just stand up there and and then and, and rattle off things that you want to hear. He's he was disappointed. I'll be very candid with everybody. He was very disappointed about Senior Day because it hurt. It hurt three kids from Luther. It hurt him deeply. So Charlie takes that personal, just like I take it personal when my, one of my coaches or athletes are hurting. He took it personal, and then the rest is history. It's behind us. It's water under the bridge, and let's move on. You think it's a wake-up call? No, I don't know what kind of call it was. I just know he was telling you how he felt. He was how he felt. Tom, when John Shoemaker flew in here 15 years ago, I'm assuming you had a plan and conceptualized where the program could go. And the stature that U of L now has in college athletics, does it differ from what you conceptualized when you came here? I'll be honest with you. See, you hit me so hard when I first got here. You know, there was blows, body blows. There were so many of you couldn't take. You know, but the first thing I had to focus in when I got here was not to worry about a successful athletic program. What I had to focus in on was compliance. And I had to get that fixed first. And then I had to get gender equity fixed. And then after that, then we could take off as an athletic program. Because I always said, with those two things really struggling, it would be like having a broken leg. It would be like running a race with a broken leg. We couldn't recruit to it because everybody would use it against us in recruiting. Our own integrity, when my number one speech to my staff all the time, and Kenny's heard it a million times, look in the mirror. How could we look in the mirror with all these things trailing us, NCAA violations and issues? And I, and I didn't want to be a part of any of that. So those were the, those were the number one and two things I'd take care of. Then we worried about success. But no, did we ever see this coming? I didn't, and I'd be lying to you. I thought we could be a very successful athletic program. But my number one thing was to fix those two things and to figure out how to build Cargo Park. As long as John Shoemaker's name was mentioned, did Tennessee follow proper protocol? Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Dave Hart called me last week and give me 24 hours because everything's in a blur right now. But it was either Wednesday or Thursday. Dave called me and they followed unbelievable protocol. Or Dave's a first class guy. Tom, do you think this this is just going to be part of the growing pains of going to the ACC? I mean, are you going to have to uh, devote more resources towards salary, toward retaining coaches? I mean, did you see this kind of come in any way? Oh, sure. Sure, and, and I plan for it. I plan for it. But you, if you look across the board, our coaches are very, very well compensated, and I do that on purpose. I don't do it so that we can stand at the top of a graph. I do it because they deserve it. I think our coaches are. Look how many are. Everybody goes after. That's all you got to do, and then that tells you all we need to know. But we will, whether we're in the ACC or the NFL, we're going to pay the best because they deserve it. What does the Sugar Bowl mean for this program? Getting the second BCS bowl game. It's going to be another tough five days in New Orleans, I know that. <laughs> 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 that. I'm still recovering from that final four. <laughs> Besides that. Uh, it's <laughs> it's going to be, it's a great benchmark. And, you know, I personally, I think it's, I think we're there a year early. I did, I would have never, ever thought this was going to happen this quick. But again, it's just a credit to him and his staff. And he's got a wonderful staff. Exhibited by how many have left. You know, he hangs on to his staff because they believe in him and he believes in them. How long do you think this process will, will take? I mean, in terms of resigning, you think it's going to be it'd be quick, like a few days? Or oh, you know, I don't know. We just, I just started talking. Literally, my first call was at 10 o'clock this morning to Hiram. And that's because Hiram was just waking up at 7 o'clock out there on the West Coast. But uh, he's, uh, Charlie, had, he had no, this, Charlie has no clue what we're even doing. Doesn't have a clue. All he cares about is we take care of his coaches. Do you, you anticipate adding years to? Oh, contract? absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I want to add years to his contract. Is there a date in mind on that? Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to get him eight years going out there. Eight years beyond this season. Yeah. Hiram to freeze. Tom, How much is there you any way the athletic department can incentivize fans to be to participate more in the football program to maybe give Charlie Strong? And answer to some of the questions we've had with fan participation. How can, I'm sorry. The first part was incentivize. How can the athletic department incentivize fans to participate more and be in, in at games in the season? Well, that's a good question. I probably don't have an answer for that. Uh, I think that 
I think our fans have been incredibly supportive, and we're a growing fan base, and we're a fan base that every that I that I truly appreciate and adore, because they've been with me thick through thick and thin, um, and I think they will be with our football team. They love our football team. There's no question about it. I just personally would like to see our. This is just one person's opinion. Take the AD hat off. I would just like to see our fan base move from mm. from being a great social setting to, to to be a game day experience. That's that's what I would really like to see. Whether whatever sport it is, let's take field hockey. Those field hockey tailgaters are tough, and we got to get them <laughs> into the stands watching the game. <laughs> coach uh, Tom is is, and you are a coach. Is there any possibility that Louisville could compete in the ACC next year? I don't see that. CD. There's always possibilities of everything, but I don't see that. I don't see that. And what I want to do in that situation is do what's right for the Big East. And, you know, you know I've got unbelievable <coughs> feelings for the Big East, and I want to make sure everything's taken, taken care of for them first, and don't, I don't want to cause a, a giant hole for them. That's, that's my first and foremost responsibility because they've been so good to us. Why do you think Rutgers is taking a different stance regarding the entity? I don't know. I really don't. Have your lawyers examined that? No. I they could have. I've been busy the last couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you have been busy, but what is the response? Fans, but Sugar Bowl, do you know yet? What's oh, the yeah. Response you know, fans, is, fans have been great. I think after today, it's really going to take off. Really, we, I mean, Our ticket sales have been phenomenal. And uh, now, with Charlie's hand and, and the team, and the team is so excited about this. It, they love their leader. They love their leader. And as an AD, what could you ask, could you ask for? It? Those kids that love their leader. After Tennessee contacted you, when did you hear from Charlie again? He said he talked to them on Monday. Did he yeah. talk to He's talked to me every day, every day. We talked Friday morning at 4 o'clock on the tarmac coming when we landed here. So we've been in constant contact with us. And, and you knew then, at 4 in the morning on Friday, that, that he was going to talk to him? I knew on, I knew on Wednesday because I gave him permission. Wednesday or Thursday. Give me the 24 hours. I don't remember. It's either Wednesday or Thursday. We were in New Jersey. Though. Did they that. call you before yeah. they called in? Yeah. When did they contact him? Do you know? I don't know. I, I went, knowing Dave Hart as well as I know him, I, I can't imagine he did it before the game. Did he tell you on Friday he was going to talk to him? Yeah. He asked if he could. I said, absolutely. Absolutely. I didn't want him to ever have any regrets. That's the last thing I wanted him to be. Say, boy, I'm stuck in Louisville when I could have had this. I'd, I'd much rather have him coaching here with a clear mind. What about Auburn? Did they ever contact you? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> you think they contacted him? I, I ain't putting anything past him. No, no, no idea. I know. I know Tennessee did everything right. So what about and the other one was Arkansas? Did they ever? No. And Jeff's a good friend of mine down there, Jeff Long. Is. But Charlie made it very clear I, that that wasn't going to be one of his options. He said he thought eighty percent of the fans, I think, thought he was gone or thought he would leave. Were, Charlie, you, were you in the eighty or twenty? Well, because I'm always hanging on by a rope, I always I probably was in the twenty, but I, I certainly wouldn't have blamed him. You know, I would have looked at him and thanked him for all he has done. Uh, I would have I've been hurt because I like him so much personally, and, and I know the program, where the direction is going. I, I think it's on a rocket ship pace. But, uh, you know, I don't think anybody could have blamed him to take that job. It's highly regarded. It's considered, I think, in every circle as a top five job in the country. You know, so he, nobody would blame him. But, you know, he put his family first. And I think he put these kids first. And then when I say family, I really mean these kids are his family, too. He's a winner. He's a winner. I'll tell you what, he's, he's an absolute winner. Tom, oh, beyond the... Uh practical aspect, what do you think the symbolic value of this is to your fans who don't maybe feel a little scarred about being a stepping stone or perceived as such? Well, I don't think we're a stepping stone anymore. Uh, you know, you certainly, you look, you look around the, the table at other coaches in our, our staff. You know, Ken, Lola, Ken Lola, our soccer coach, could have any job in America anytime, any minute. Dan McDonald, same boat. I mean, I can go all the way down, look at the job in Cordesness. So all our coaches they, they've really bonded together, and they've turned this into a, a true destination place. You know, and look at Coach Patino, what he's done. And he's turned this into an unbelievable job here, an unbelievable job. So that they don't choose to leave, and I think Charlie saw that. He saw the, the, the relationships that he has, and he has a lot of relationships with our coaches. That's a, the that's a beauty of our athletic department. We're a very tight group. We're a family. You know, again, a lot of people talk, let's be a family. I think our people walk it. 
and I think that's paid huge dividends. But to answer your question in, in a short form, it definitely helps us. I think it sh it shows that this is a destination place. And that's where I want it to be. When you look back and you took over the job, could you imagine it being as you're describing it right now, uh, with all the coaches and as healthy as the athletic department yeah. is? When I took over the job, I was just trying to survive. I really mean that. I don't mean that to be facetious. I was just trying to survive. Getting the next day was very important to me. You, you probably had a vision, though, of, of what you wanted. It oh, I always had a like. vision of what I wanted. Is it, is this I always want to win the lottery. <laughs> you know, it, doesn't, it doesn't come into play, though. But is this the vision that you probably had? This is probably more. This more. has exceeded even my expectations. Do you think Charlie's decision kind of, unless they make it more of a destination, I mean, yeah, how much more cash do you feel like him staying here kind of brings, maybe for bringing in some some top flight assistance? Because, you know, the ones he that has top flight assistance. I'll tell you what, he has top flight assistance. Right? I mean, they might start getting interest too. Well, they're, they're getting interest. Ahead. They just have chosen not to go. But he gets, he Charlie Strong will always be able to handpick the top people in the country because of the connections that he has and the reputation he has. And I think everybody saw that today in his press conference. That's why, that's why coaches want to work for him. They want to be with him. And uh, he, he knows how to get it done. And he, he proved it here. He's proven it. I thought it was kind of ironic that you were pitted against uh, Dave Hart, Jr. Did you ever you know his dad was athletic director at one point? Did you, you ever meet his dad? I have met his dad, yeah. I did. And when we played back here at the Florida State game, and it was at 01, 02, whenever that was, he was here for that. In fact, we played golf, and it was pouring down rain. <laughs> so it was a nice man, very nice man. Any idea how much you can increase the pool for the assistant coaches? Is there a number on that yet, or is that still something? That'll stay with us for right now. We're still working on that. But we're going to definitely increase it. Yes, the last four or five days passed, and you saw developments. Did you? Was there an ebb and flow in your confidence, or did you? No, there confident? really wasn't. Uh, Kenny alerted me that Charlie said, oh, we had it done Tuesday night. Uh, that was news to me, because I would have really enjoyed Wednesday a lot more. I was <laughs> promise you. So, so last night when I talked to him, was, that was really the first inclination, or first time I felt comfortable. Did you think he was gone Monday? Or? I never thought he was gone, but I sure couldn't sit or Tim and say that he was going to stay either. Mm -hmm. Was that Oh, we talked about 7 o'clock, maybe, I don't know, sometimes maybe around 7, I think. Tom, do you know if Seth Hancock was involved in the process at all in the last week? Um, I, I can't answer that. You'd have to ask him. Anything else? Good. Thank you, Kenny.